So, hi, my name is Norman, welcome back. In the last video, I built a skyline diffuser in my living room and I mentioned that it's throwing some really, really cool shadows to the wall and that I was working on a way to get more lights up there, to get more cool shadows on the wall. So, I worked through a couple of prototypes here. You can see um, they look like weird mugs and also are humongous. So, let me tell you, as a base, I am using this regular main socket and another socket for the bulb. And as a bulb, I'm using the Philips Hue um, just because I had a couple of those lying around. This is just a regular East E27 <laughs> Philips Hue bulb. Uh, screws on and then it goes on. Let me show you. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I think I will talk you through the prototypes and what I had in mind. Then I will talk about my final design and how I got there. Let's jump right in. Okay, so this one was my first design iteration. It was designed to take the entire thing. So there's a little thread here with a counter piece and then I intended to put this in and screw it on and here we go you have a lamp shade or whatever working perfectly fine actually this was this was perfectly fine except that i didn't like how it looked it looked like a weird jet engine actually i do like jet engines but um not this one for some reason I printed two of those because I thought I liked them. You can see it was tilted at a slight angle at uh, I believe 10 degrees. So it's pointing downwards a little bit. Still, they're ugly. I realize that now and um, yeah, let's talk about Mark II. Mark II was a little bit different because number one it's a little bit slimmer, uh, less of a jet engine look. Also we have these little dots, holes in here and um, they actually threw a really really cool pattern to the wall but to make this work to throw a pattern to the wall uh, these Philips Hue bulbs won't work because they have a, a frosted front and this will diffuse the light source so much that basically there's no harsh shadows and of course then no dots visible. I decided to ditch that a little bit uh, more about that later uh, because I think I think they give a little extra to the overall shape and um, and give a little eye catcher to that um, still Mark II had the same principle of that screw in thing is the reason why it's ugly and why it's so large for such a small bulb so and here we're coming to Mark III which is this one it looks a lot sleeker a lot slimmer a lot smaller Actually, uh, yeah, that's, that's a different thing. So the idea for Mark III was to get rid of this thing, which is making the diameter huge, and just screw that thing directly into the, the, the socket or whatever. Um, this actually works kind of great, but the problem is that um, this thread here, I don't know how to measure threads, and I also didn't <laughs> look it up. I just tried out a little bit, so you can see here are two other prototypes of threads. I basically just started to print and then canceled once I, I was sure that there was enough printed. Yeah, this was actually the first one I, I just noticed. So this one was way too small, so I increased the diameter. Then we had this one, still it's not the right angle. So this is the third one. I, you can see I used leftover filament for that. Uh, that's why it's so colorful. And this one actually, looks or feels more or less promising but you can see it's not the perfect diameter i don't know what's wrong even this one took about i think 45 minutes to print and i got really impatient so i, I settled with this uh, thread style not the color just the, the the model itself yeah we're gonna use hot glue for that because um, it's a lot easier and i love using hot glue because this stuff is amazing it's not the perfect thread but um, it will help the hot glue a lot to, to hold on this thing won't go anywhere uh, once it's glued in and here's also something interesting because I, I actually wanted to print them in black but also wanted to have a, a greater light source this one will be black later this one is white and will stay white and um, you can just slide this in here there's a little slot and once it's inside the white surface inside will act as a reflector and help the bulb to glow even brighter that's the idea 
You can also see I kept the holes, I increased their diameter a little bit um, just to give it more of an industrial look. Of course with this bulb they don't work anymore but um, still I, I do like them so that I kept them. You can also see I, this thing here, I got rid of that. Instead I'm using a tripod and a screw with a thread to keep everything in place. Yeah, this thing uh, I forgot to uh, add the thread here so it's not, not threaded. That's why another prototype just printed the thread and it works like a charm. And also I decided to include barn doors. They're designed to just clip on and they work surprisingly well and they just snap on because this way you can keep the light away from the sofa and just direct it directly onto the Skyline diffusers. And also, you know, it gives it a little bit more of an industrial touch with which I was looking to have with this build here. So this is the prototype. Um, Mark III has, as you can see, a lot more functions than one and two combined. And I think it looks, it looks very cool. Let's hop to the computer so that I can tell you a little bit more about the design process itself. So you gotta understand, I'm not going to explain to you how to design this. I think there are a lot more people um, who are way more qualified than I am to do that. But you know, I designed this entire thing with 3D printing in mind. And I think there are a couple of things which are um, kind of interesting and way too interesting not to mention here in this video. So let's hop into Fusion 360. This is the software which I use, I love. I love that it's free and awesome. You should definitely check it out if you are interested in, in cadding and stuff. So um, yeah, here we are. This is the lamp and um, Fusion 360 has a parametric um, design feature, which means you have a history down below here and I can just hop to my very first um, thing I did and show you. So first thing I did was uh, invisible is doing a sketch. So this is basically um, a leg. And actually just with the first thing I did, there's already a thing which is um, important about 3D printing, which is the overhang angle. So this angle here is 45 degrees. I think a printer can print up to 60, I don't know. Um, but I just wanted to be absolutely sure not to have any ugly things down below hanging around. I went safe, 45, I think most printers can actually print 45 degrees overhang, um, so this, this should be fine. So next thing was just extrude it and then, you know, create duplicates to make three legs and all that. Um, I think, yeah, we're gonna fast forward to the next thing, which is interesting. Okay, here's the next interesting thing. I'm using the press pull feature. Uh, let me just show you real quickly. Um, okay, this should do the trick. So this is um, a feature which makes a cross cut and um, you can see or not see, um, okay, you gotta imagine this is the screw which threads into the legs and I'm using this, this press pull feature to add a little bit more tolerance. When you're using the thread tool from Fusion 360, you know, it creates a thread obviously perfectly to the size which you type in. And um, if you have a machine which can reproduce that thing perfectly, you're gonna have two perfect threads sliding into each other. But of course we have a 3D printer and um, they are in fact not perfect, especially mine because they are entry level. Um, I added a little bit tolerance and usually um, to have like a friction fit tolerance, so not just easy slide but heavy slide, I add about half the nozzle diameter which I want to use. So um, I'm, I'm having a 0 0.4 nozzle which means I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to press pull minus 0 0.2 so that, um, you know, it's half the nozzle diameter for the screw to move along. So um, this is just a thing. Um, in hindsight, I think um, a little bit more even would be nicer because the, the screw itself, you know, it tightens so it doesn't need a friction fit. So maybe uh, 0.3 or even 0.4 would be just fine. With that move, we added a little bit more space. Uh, where is it? You can see the thread gets a little bit bigger. 
yeah just look here press pull whip more space for the screw to slide okay so with the barn doors there's actually something very interesting um, you can see uh, at this point they're still all identical I never did a friction hold with that small point so I knew that it needs a little bit more probably a little bit more friction um, than just the point two so actually here I tried something out so between the lugs and um, that thing holding uh, which is connected to the lamp itself um, I, I gave a little space of uh, point two as well um, just to take stress of these lugs here and then I made a little notch which is going into a hole I made it tiny for some reason I could have made it bigger but basically I wanted it to slide in here and have here the biggest point of friction you can see there's no tolerance in this hole I wanted it to slide and use that chamfer maybe so that it holds on as good as it can you know it's, it's a very tiny surface so I maybe put a little bit too much thought into it <laughs> actually gotta admit I'm, I, I will be using glue to tighten it um, so this thing all didn't matter this was just a small experiment of mine and um, yeah learn something nevertheless that next time this thing needs to be a lot bigger to do anything for the next project I maybe need to put a little bit more effort into this um, so let's move on so maybe here inside also um, of course we're going, going to talk about tolerances again so here in this edge at the back we have a 0.2 tolerance between the reflector and the lamp um, just to make sure that it will be flush at the front and the next tolerance is actually here in between and I gave it a little bit more I think uh, 0.4 at each side so that you know um, the reflector itself has a little bit more to space to bend away it's just because I know most printers I work with um, print usually a tiny little bit bigger than they are supposed to print so um, when the reflector gets bigger and actually the wall of the lamp also gets bigger both of them will decrease the diameter of the lamp the reflector wouldn't fit anymore if it ha wouldn't have any space to bend away and actually also there's like no way to tell exactly how much the thing is going to shrink so you just have to guesstimate and my guesstimation is for this size it's about you know 0.8 and it actually did work pretty fine and here we go we're done this is the lamp and it's full glory so now we had the theoretical stuff let's do the practical stuff which is assembling the second lamp I kept that for you guys so that we can do that on camera which is great right here we go so we are going to start with the legs we have this little channel here inside the back leg just to hide the cables a little bit and this requires a little bit of preparation by the way the models will be available freely to download down below in the description here's the thing don't start printing if you are not sure what I'm doing right now if you cannot tell you know this is the mains there's a lot of voltage it's dangerous it's a fire hazard if you're not absolutely confident what you're doing don't mess with any of this so we need to open this thing and um, it's actually you know here we are it's open okay so now we, we need to memorize which cable is going into which connection inside here and um, we can see the brown one is going into the long one and um, that's all I need okay you can see they are just inserted here and um, the easiest way to pull them out is pushing the, the screwdriver in and here we go it's outside same for the blue one just push it in okay give me a second So, so by removing this and by pushing the screwdriver inside we actually bent a couple of connections which isn't too bad because you can see there's a little funny face with two eyes and a mouth and we can use the left eye here because we destroyed the right one but of course we are going to repair this because this is also very easy here in the front you can see there's a little um, brass part I guess I don't know what metal it is but it's golden and you can just push it back and then you can push the entire thing out see it dropped and this is 
this is the thing, right? We bend this connection here, we're just going to push it back. Here we are. So that way we can use both connections again, even though we just need one. It just gives me a little bit of peace of mind. So this is a little brass piece we just pushed back and um, you, you're just gonna make sure when putting it back into the, the, the case, the housing, whatever, um, that it's, it's sticking out again so that it can hold this entire thing in place. And of course it does, it still does. So we can just push it in. And it should click. It did. Yeah, I'm just going to repeat the exact same thing with the other side. Here we go. So now we can use both connections on each side again. Uh, we needed to remove this thing and also these things because we need to route the cable through the cable channel. So, and of course we mem memorized uh, the brown one is the long one. So, I'm gonna go in here. Well, after thinking about it actually, um, it doesn't quite matter that much where you put your connections. Because you know the main plug actually also does have two connections and you can plug it in either way. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it doesn't really matter. Because the mains plug also doesn't care which way you put it in, right? So for the next thing, actually, um, we need sanding paper first. So by the way, if you want to know what type of filament this is, this is um, 3D Jake's matte black. And this is, I don't, I still don't know what I, I got to think about this filament here. Because just look at this. Looking at this surface here, it's just out of this world. It's, it's crazy. Like, I don't know what to, it's just phenomenal. But um, printing the details are so hard with this filament. You can tell here I have some problems with retraction. Um, this is when the printer pulls back the filament to take pressure off the nozzle. Yeah, you can see here there's there are a lot of little artifacts from retraction. I don't know how to prevent this. I tried a bunch of things and um, it does, just doesn't seem to work. So um, I need to work a little bit more with this filament but other than that flat surfaces um, they're just awesome. Love that. Uh, we need to sand a little bit because told you it has problem with retractions not only we have these weird artifacts here also we have artifacts around these holes of course when we install this when we install this reflector here these little dots sticking out here will be in the way so we need to send them and just taking very coarse um, 60 grit because it's a surface we you won't see later so same actually also on the outside um, this is a different filament but actually also the same problem um, it's mainly because um, these overhangs here. Told you I have entry-level printers. Also, I do have a lot of problems with um, with cooling, with part cooling. So, you know, working on a 3D printer is a constant development um, if you don't get an enterprise machine. If you have an entry-level machine, you're gonna work on it until it's perfect and mine is far from that. Still, it's good enough for now. Also, I'm sending off this edge here, and this is these are um, remainings from the brim I used because it's a very thin, small surface to print. Um, I used a, a large brim um, to make sure that it stays on the print bed. Also, very interesting thing, while we're talking about brims, this thing, it's actually mandatory to print it with brims. I'm, I'm pretty confident that if you don't use brims here, these small surfaces, because they gotta carry all the weight until the moment the printer reaches the middle here. Um, they're gonna get loose if you don't use a brim. So I increased the brim size here to 10 millimeters to give it a lot, a lot to hold on. And I printed these things without any failures. I recommend you doing the same. Increase brim size to whatever you feel confident. It doesn't take much to print a larger brim, but it takes much to weight and print. Um, and also probably clean up everything if your print fails. Just, just do it. So once we got this sanded down, actually, um, the reflector should just friction fit inside. Yep, 
here we go. There's the key um, that's just to align the holes probably. I could probably um, have it a little bit smaller but it doesn't really matter because you are going to see the lamp from this side from the bottom and you're never gonna notice this anyway because the lamp will be far up high at the ceiling. So now we're going to use the magic trick of laziness and here we go. Oh, I used way too much. And then, um, you know, it just align the holes. I think, I think you know what I'm doing here. So unfortunately the screw is just allowed from one side. So this hole is threaded, this hole is not. I think that's, that's how you do this kind of designs. I don't know, but it works. So I don't really care. Works more or less, let's say that way. So I told you I should have increased the tolerance here, this thread at 0.3 or even 0.4. So because it's a very frictiony fit, um, this screw actually needs to be very, very strong. The downside of matte filament um, is that, I don't know, but it feels a lot softer and a lot weaker. And actually it's true. So I used, um, I used Amazon Basics um, transparent red, translucent red. This stuff is amazing. It looks cool. It looks really cool. Let me show you. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I love that filament as well. It's one of my favorites. It has a really nice color also. Um, <laughs> the color is very, very hard to catch on camera because it just reflects all the incoming light and um, blows out with a deep red. So um, just imagine this thing in real life would look a lot cooler than it already does on camera. However, I used the, the, the translucent red here for the screw. Actually, it's not a design thing because, well, it looks cool, but also um, it's because uh, this filament is a little bit stronger than the matte black. So last but not least, we are going to add the barn doors. And um, I'm just using this, the smaller ones on the sides and the bigger ones on top and bottom. Oh, actually, they, they hold a lot better than the other ones. Okay, no, they don't. So, to um, glue them, I will need to make sure that they at least have the, the almost same angle. And to keep, keep these things from moving, I'm just using this, this model glue. Um, I think it's amazing for 3D prints. So, just one little dot on each hinge and here we go. We gotta wait until it dries now. Okay, here we are again, back in the living room. Um, I had to wait a little bit, of course, until the sun is done doing its thing. You know, setting and all that. You can see they, they already give a lot of color to the background. Yeah, good thing to know is that the reflectors inside the lamp work as intended. So instead of just having a single bulb, if I look up there, the entire inside of the lamp is actually the light source. Also now, depending from where you look at, you have different colors of these, these wooden pieces from the skull and diffuser. From the bottom we have our pink, red-ish thing, magenta, I guess. <laughs> and from the sides we have um, um, turquoise blue. And of course it's smart Philips hue thing, so we can change any color to any color we want. I still need to work out some really cool settings. Um, but I think, I think I like this one. You know, it's a cool color combination. I love the blue, I love the pink. As always guys, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed watching this video here and um, you know what to do. See you guys in the next one. Bye bye.